OK, guys, I'm just going to dive straight into this one and get started. So this is how I install a double binding on a guitar body using the acetone method. As usual, this is just how I do it. It's not necessarily how you should do it, but I've done quite a few of these now and I'm getting consistent results that I'm really happy with using this method. So I thought it might be useful to share it. So first I'll just have a quick chat about the prep for the guitar. So the edges of the guitar, I've just made sure that I've sanded them nice and smooth. They're not fine sanded ready for finishing. I've just done enough sanding to get rid of any dips or peaks so that when I route the binding channel, it's going to be nice and smooth when it follows the edge of the guitar. So what I always like to do when I'm installing binding is that I like the top of the binding to be just slightly proud of the top of the guitar, just by about the thickness of a piece of paper and exactly the same on the sides. And the reason for that is that I just prefer scraping the binding down to the level of the wood rather than the other way around. So that's nice and simple to do for the depth of the channel to the top of the guitar, just by setting the height on the router. But the easy way to do that for making the depth into the sides or the edge of the guitar correct is just to wrap a piece of tape around the bearing bit on the router. And that's what I've done here. So when it comes to actually installing the binding, what I'm going to do is to tape the binding into the channel around the guitar first before I use any acetone. And I'm going to do it by putting a piece of tape about every six or seven centimetres so that when I come back to do the acetone, there'll be plenty of space left in between the bits of tape in order for me to be able to put the acetone in and then tape up all of the gaps. The really nice thing about doing it this way is that it gives you plenty of time when it comes to actually sticking the binding on with the acetone because you're not trying to bend and manipulate and press the binding into the channel at the same time that you're gluing it. But what I am making sure that I'm doing is to get the binding perfectly in place when I tape it so I'm not going to have to manipulate it at all when I come to use the acetone. So when it comes to heating up the binding to go around corners what I found is that holding the binding and holding my finger behind the binding where I'm going to heat it up with the gun is quite a good way to judge when you've heated up the binding enough. So when the heat gets a bit too intense for my finger, that's usually the point that the binding is warm enough to bend around a pretty tight curve. It can be a bit of a fine line with the plastic binding, particularly if you're using a darker colour, because if it's too cold and you're doing a fairly sharp bend, you're going to start to get stress lines on the outside of the bend, and on dark binding this is going to appear as white lines that go up vertically, and it's not going to look very nice. And if it's too hot, the binding will start to bend and warp in ways that you don't want it to. So if I'm dealing with any curves at all, I'll always heat the binding and go around the curve. So the way that I've found to get the best results that I'm happy with is that if I'm bending the binding around a curve, I'll always just heat it and bend it. If I've got to go around a sharp corner, I'll cut off the binding and I'll rejoin a new bit. So for this guitar body, there's a fairly sharp corner on both the upper and the lower horn. So what I'm going to do for both of those is to cut the binding at that point and to join a new piece onto it. In fact, one of the really nice things about the acetone method is that because the plastic binding is dissolving in the acetone, when you're joining pieces, you're actually bonding them together as opposed to just gluing one piece to another. So when you come to clean up those edge joints, it will actually look like a seamless joint once you're finished. So you can see I've started to apply the acetone here. So what I'm doing is to apply it with a syringe and I'm just squirting it right in between the plastic and the wood. Even though there's no gap there, the acetone seeps through nicely and I'm just applying enough so that I can see it seeping through the binding channel that I've cut just underneath the binding on the side of the guitar. That means there's plenty in there because it's gone all the way through and it's going to bond just fine. So I just work my way around doing about 5 or 10 centimetres at a time and taping as I go. Once you've applied the acetone and it starts to melt the plastic, you've got about one to two minutes of working time before it starts drying. So if you're working in five or ten centimetre sections, you've got plenty of working time without having to rush. So a fairly useful tip just at this point is to make sure that you're pressing the binding in and down in the channel because it's surprisingly easy just to leave a hairline gap, particularly in the side of the guitar, because your instinct tends to be to push the binding into the guitar but not necessarily down in the channel as well. So this is the point where I need to join a couple of pieces together. 
the most important thing that I'm going to do here is just to make sure that where the two meet, the new piece I'm going to cut the edge profile of the binding so that the joint fits perfectly into the existing piece. That way when I use the acetone to stick it on, one piece will actually bond to the other. And that's what's going to give me the seamless join that I was talking about earlier. So I've just left in about a minute or so so that you can see how I do the cuts and the joins. So you can skip forwards if you're not going to be particularly interested in that. It's worth mentioning just at this point though, for all of the cuts in the binding, and because it's easy just to shave off just a hair where you need to, I always just use a razor blade. It's by far the easiest way to get it perfect. Okay, so when it comes to getting a perfect binding, part of that is filling in some of the hairline cracks and gaps that you have. So it's pretty much inevitable that at some point, depending on how complex the shape of the guitar is, that you're going to have some hairline gaps in the binding that you've got, or you might have some gaps where you've got joins in the binding. So it can be a little bit tempting to use sawdust and wood glue just to fill those gaps. But a really nice way of doing it is just to use the binding itself as a glue and a filler. And you just do that by taking the binding you've got left over, taking a load of shavings off it and putting it in a little bit of acetone and just leaving it for a few hours. However, before I do any of the filling, what I've found is the best way to do it first is to get all of the binding from both the top, the bottom and the sides of the guitar flush with the wood. That just means that once you've removed all of that excess material, it's really easy to see where you've got any gaps that need to be filled. So I'm going to trim off all of the joints and corners with a razor blade. And because on the top and the bottom of the guitar, I've got about the thickness of a sheet of paper where the binding is proud of the body, I can just bring that down to being flush with the sander. And then I use a razor blade or a scraper to do the edge of the guitar. So this is the bit that I was talking about earlier when I said that I'd rather bring down the level of the binding to the level of the wood than I would to bring the wood down to the level of the binding. And that's because if you're using a scraper or a razor blade on the edge of the guitar, it's really nice and easy to see when you're done because you just keep scraping until you start getting some wood shavings in between the binding and then you're done. And here then it's nice and easy just to go all around the edge of the binding, see where you've got any hairline gaps and fill those with the dissolved binding from the acetone that you had earlier. I found that the best way is to apply the filler with the needle because you can push it right down into any gaps that you've got and just to leave the filler slightly proud of the surface because it's a very quick thing to come back with a sander and just level it off. And then once I've sanded down all of those areas that I filled, I just give it a good brush off, have a really good look around the binding and make sure there's no hairline gaps or bits that I've missed. And the last bit then that I've got to do is to revisit the neck pocket just to tidy that up and make sure everything's perfect. Okay, and that's how I do my binding. So I really do hope that that's of some use to you. And I've just put in a few close-up pictures here so you can see what the binding looks like when it's finished and what the final results are. Thanks very much for watching and I'll have some more videos coming soon.